हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू फिजिकल साइंस डिजिटल क्लासेस महबूबाबाद टेंथ क्लास केमिकल इक्वेशंस पार्ट वन सो टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट केमिकल चेंज केमिकल इक्वेशंस राइटिंग ए केमिकल इक्वेशन माय सेल्फ कोटला नरेंद्र बाबू पीजीटी केमिस्ट्री टीएसएमएस महबूबाबाद so till now we have discussed in our previous classes on different changes that occur around us and we have classified those changes into physical change and chemical change so have classified those changes into physical change and chemical change now just think about the changes involved in the following activities in our daily life so what are those activities so some of the activities the process of digestion and burning of the cracker the process of respiration the powdered lime added to the water ripening of grape etc and according to these activities what changes do you notice are they physical changes or chemical changes are they temporary changes or permanent changes if you observe all of the above activities are the physical changes or chemical changes are the temporary changes or permanent changes if you observe this in all of the above process the nature of original substance would be changed if new substances are formed with properties completely unlike to those of the original substances we say that a chemical change has taken place if you observe in this so the nature of the original substance changed in all the above cases so that's why the new substances are formed in all the above cases so with different properties of the original substances chemical change has taken place so coming to here what is a chemical change chemical change chemical reactions are the processes in which new substances with new properties are formed so in a process if new substances are formed which are having new properties and such type of the process is generally called as a chemical reaction for example see if you go through this chemical change is a permanent change and coming to the next what happens during a chemical change what happens during a chemical change so the original substance loses their characteristic property hence this may be products with different physical states color and composition the original substance generally loses the characteristic property hence so they may be the products with different physical states color and composition there is a chance to change in the physical states also of the products and color of the products at the same time composition of the products also changes and coming to the next one chemical changes may be exothermic or endothermic exothermic in the sense the process in which heat energy releases exo in the sense exit releases exothermic in the sense the process in which heat energy releases such chemical changes are called as exothermic chemical changes endothermic endo into in the sense the process in which heat energy absorbs and that is endothermic that means during a chemical change there is a possibility of releasing the heat energy and there is a possibility of absorbing the heat energy also so that's why chemical changes may exothermic or endothermic and the third one is so they may be formed an insoluble substance so they are called precipitation so during a chemical change some of the substances are soluble in the substances and some of the substances are insoluble and the substances which are insoluble and which formed during a chemical reaction during a chemical change and such type of the substances are called precipitates and that is called the process is called precipitation and coming to the during a chemical reaction sometimes liberation of the gas is also takes place and coming to the next chemical equation so what is a chemical equation actually so chemical change that can be represented with the chem uh, chemical equation the process of chemical change that can be represented with the chemical equation 
So before that, this chemical equation also represents with word form also. Actually, word form in the sense it takes lengthy and it is difficult to understand, difficult to identify easily. That's why the chemical equation we can also represent. So in equation form, that means representation of chemical reaction in terms of symbols or formulae of the reactants and products are known as chemical equation. So that means, so a chemical reaction can be represented with the help of the symbols or the formulae of the reactants and products are known as chemical equation. And coming to the example, zinc that reacts with the hydrochloric acid and it produces the zinc chloride and hydrogen gas. So in this reaction, so we are representing the formula, formula of reactants and formula of formulae of products. So in this, so we got new words reactants and products. Let us see what are reactants and products. So reactants in the sense, the substances which undergo chemical change in the reaction are called reactants. The substances which undergo chemical change, the substance which undergo chemical change in a reaction is called that is reactant and products in the sense new substances are formed during a chemical reaction. So those new substances are called products during a chemical reaction reactants are converting into the products reactants in the sense the substances which undergo chemical change. Products in the sense, the substances which forms, that means the, the substances are the new substances which are formed during a chemical reaction are called products. And if you take the same example, so that is zinc on reaction with the HCl, so zinc chloride and hydrogen gas releases here. In this case, here zinc and HCl, both of these are reactants. Okay, and zinc chloride and H2, these are products. Why? Because zinc reacting with the hydrogen chloride, that means uh, hydrochloric acid. So, the substances zinc and the HCl, they are undergoing chemical change. That's why they are called as reactants. The substances zinc chloride, that means ZnCl2 and H2, they are formed during the chemical reaction. That's why they are called products. And next one is writing a chemical equation. So a chemical reaction written in the formula shows the changes of reactants and products by an arrow placed between them. So that means uh, if you take the reactants and products, a chemical reaction that is uh, written in the formula shows the change of reactants to the products. So that means just now we discussed reactants are converting into the products. A chemical reaction or chemical equation that represents the, the reactants are converting into the products and that will be represented by an arrow between them. And the next one, the reactants are written on the left side and of the arrow. If you take the reactants should write on left side of the arrow, the product should represent on the or product are written on the right side of the arrow. So if you take the reaction, so left side of the arrow, they are called reactants, right side of the arrow, so they are called, the pro they are called products. So the arrow head point towards the products shows the direction of the reaction. So in our previous reaction, if you observe, if arrow mark that indicates, so that means the head of the arrow that indicates the direction of the reaction, the head of the arrow indicates the direction of the reaction. If there are more than one reactants or products, if there are more than one reactants or products involved in the reaction, they are separated with plus sign between them. So let us see an example here. Here I have taken the calcium oxide, so which is taken in water and it forms the calcium hydroxide. CaO, calcium oxide, H2O, water. Both of these are reactants, CaO and H2O are reactants. They react together and they form the products. So that is the CaOH taken twice. So that is the products and reactants. So if you observe all the four points in this, 
So the reactants are converting into the products. Calcium oxide and H2O are reactants. They are converting into the products calcium hydroxide. One. And the reactants are written on the left hand side. That means calcium oxide and H2 are written on the left hand side of this arrow. Calcium hydroxide represented on the right hand side. Why? Because it is product. And the arrowhead that represents the direction of the reaction. That means reactants are converting into the products. If more than one reactants or products are present, that will be represented with the plus sign. So it means calcium oxide is one reactant and H2O is also an another reactant. That's why calcium oxide and H2O, so they can represent, they, they separate with plus sign between them. And coming to the next one, balanced equation. What is a balanced equation? And coming to here, a chemical equation in which number of atoms of different elements on reactant side is the same as those that are product side is called as balanced equation. A chemical equation in which the number of atoms of different elements on reactant side is the same as those that are product side is called as balancing chemical equation. That means if you take the reactant side and the product side. So the number of atoms of different elements on reactant side is equal to the number of atoms of different elements on product side. If the number of atoms of different elements on reactant side is equal to the number of atoms of, of different elements on product side, so then that is called as balanced equation. For example, sodium sulfate Na2SO4 plus BaCl2 gives rise BaSO4 plus 2 NaCl. Actually, it is a balanced equation. What is Na2SO4? Sodium sulfate on reaction with barium chloride, it gives the barium sulfate and sodium chloride. So in this reaction, so number of the atoms of different elements on reactant side is equal to the number of atoms of different elements on product side. So that means, let us check. Sodium, it is an element. How many atoms are there? Na2. Two atoms are present. And reactant side. And let us see the product side. Two Na. Two sodiums are present on the product side. At the same time, sulfur. One sulfur atom is present on reactant side. And one sulfur atom present on the product side. Oxygen atoms are also four oxygen atoms on reactant side. Four oxygen atoms on product side. And barium one barium atom present on reactant side, one barium atom on towards the product side. And two chlorine atoms are present and reactant side, two chlorine atoms towards the product side. That means the number of the atoms of different elements are same as compared to the reactants to the products. So that's why it is a balanced chemical equation. So then why we need to balance a chemical equation. What is the need to balance a chemical equation? Why we have to balance? So that means, actually in a chemical equation, the masses of reactants and products may or may not be equal. The masses of the reactants and the masses of the products, so they may be equal or may not be equal. So that's why there may be a change. But if they change, then why we have to balance the equation? According to the law of conservation of mass, the total mass of the reactants and the total mass of the product should be equal. According to the law of mass, the total mass of the reactants and the total mass of the product should be equal. So for example, if you take the above equation, sodium sulfate reacts with the barium chloride and it forms the barium sulfate and sodium chloride. So whatever the total mass of the sodium sulfate and barium chloride, so the total mass of the reactants that should be equal to the total mass of the products. So to maintain this, how many number of the atoms of uh, different elements we are taking towards the reactant side, we should take the so number of atoms or we should represent the number of atoms of different elements towards the right hand side. So Due to this reason, we have to balance the chemical equation. According to the law of conservation of mass, the total mass of the reactants and the total mass of the products should be equal. Thank you.